Hello viewers, Super GT here. In my previous video, I took a look at the Suzuki VGT in Group 3, one of the most overpowered cars in the class. This time we're taking a look at this, the Suzuki Swift in Group 4, usually known as one of the slowest cars in this group. We're going to be taking it to Road Atlanta. This is the scene of the second round of the Manufacturer Series and the scene of some very interesting races, it must be said. But before the races, we took a quick couple of laps of practice to see how this car would perform. And to be fair, through the corners it felt fine. It was on this straight, this very long straight at Road Atlanta, that I felt like this car would certainly be lacking. So I set a couple of laps, and quite worryingly, there were no Suzuki Swifts anywhere near the top of the leaderboard. So I knew that this one would be quite a tricky race. But we jump into qualifying for the first race and well it didn't start off very well because as we go into turn one we literally go into the wall and that is not ideal. So with that mistake made I kind of had to get out of the way of everyone else as you can see awkwardly skipping across the grass to not block anyone's laps. But eventually I found some space and was able to focus on hopefully getting around this corner properly without smashing myself into a wall and look at that I've done it absolutely unbelievable but through here Road Atlanta very twisty first sector very fun when you hook it up and to be fair the Suzuki Swift is not too bad in terms of handling it really is power where it really lacks kind of different to the, the Group 3 Suzuki but as part of manufacturer series, you have to deal with Group 3, group three and Group 4 cars. And therefore, well, you can skip the Group 4, but I'm not going to. I'm doing it right now. So you can see here on this qualifying lap, right up behind the Nissan GTR, look at the difference in speed here. From the beginning of the straight, you see it just disappears off into the distance, decreasing the amount of pixels on my screen. And I would say we're losing a good, uh, at least a couple of attempts minimum on that straight maybe even half a second alone uh, but as we come round the bottom of the hill around the final corner on the lap it's a 25 something p3 p4 not too bad initially it was a 25 7 uh, on the next lap i cut that corner a little bit too much i was stuck up behind this nissan gtr but eventually it would mean i would qualify fifth on the grid which actually i was quite happy with eight tenths off pole but still P5, not, not a bad uh, place to start, but I mean it's not P4 is it, or 3 or 2 or 1. But anyway, the lights are out and the race is underway, so let's see what we can do. Now initially, this uh, Porsche going very very slowly, so I thought okay, let's just go for this move. And this was my first time doing the race, I wasn't completely sure on the strategy. But it's one of those where you kind of have to work it out as you go along. So up into 4th immediately. And we're going to just try and keep up with the Nissan GTRs up in front. G I mean, the GTR is really, let's face it, one of the strongest cars, if not the strongest car in the class, uh, aside from the WRX Subaru. So to be anywhere near this car is something of a miracle. Porsche trying to come back at us here over the crest towards turn number six and seven, I think. I don't actually know. Someone please confirm if this is turn 7 right here. Onto the back straight. We go. Now this is where I expect this car to be weak. Um, but the thing I was looking at here is the fuel. Because I had, well, 12 and a half laps of fuel remaining. And it was a 16 lap race. So I was feeling that the one stop is probably the more likely option. To stop for fuel halfway through the race. But then again, the no stop, not impossible. Now, something I was certainly bearing in mind at this point of the race. Early doors just yet. Now, the two Nissans in front have swapped positions. And I'm also about to swap positions with this guy in front. Because he kind of did, well, an impression of me in qualifying. As we head in towards turn one, take a look. Just forgets to turn. There's a corner there and just forgets that there's a steering wheel in front of him and just decides to drive off onto the grass. But um, that's no problem for me, up into, up into third place. So this race is going fairly well so far, and I kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to save a bit of fuel as much as I can. I'm also going to get a penalty for that, which was really frustrating. 
and a penalty in a fuel saving race is it is just even more painful as we serve it there a lap later lap four you see just how much momentum you lose from a one second you see the nissan gtr here is going to come flying through there's not much i can do to stop it other than not get penalties you could always just do that so down into p5 i wasn't too worried bearing in mind that i was trying to save fuel and play the long game these guys would have to come in and obviously lose time now i was nine laps i had nine laps of fuel at this point but there were actually 12 laps to actually do now for those of you who are expert in maths you could probably work out that i will run out of fuel with three laps to go at this rate and that is not the way we want to end the race so there's quite a lot of fuel saving to do from now until the end of the race and this is the end of lap eight so coming up to halfway into the race and still the situation wasn't really much better uh, it was improving we had eight laps to go as as we crossed the line but i had just under well you see that i used 42 i've still got 42 percent or 41 percent of fuel remaining with half the race to go and that doesn't quite add up now a couple of other people went into the pit lane it was that time of the race where the others were going to go in get their fuel and this is where i would therefore gain some positions and move up the order and uh, the top two eventually came in this was lap number 11 and i still had 25 percent of fuel remaining um, as you can see by this point i was in lean mix six which is something you don't often go into on this game until uh, you get to a really desperate situation which we are in right now there you go i found myself in the lead of the race in a car that i really just did not think could ever be there but one big issue really with the lack of fuel and it was going to be quite a hard aim to remain anywhere near the front of the pack before the end of the race so still in lean mix six and trust me this thing feels so slow on this straight when you've got it in lean mix six it feels like a group five car let alone a group four car and we're probably losing a good 15 miles an hour down that straight it doesn't sound like much but trust me that is a ton in the world of motorsport as we come up the hill over the crest and back down the other side at the end of lap number 12 we still have four laps remaining but only three laps of fuel so i am catching up with that but it's still quite a precarious situation to be in where you're not actually sure if you're going to finish the race and only now are we seeing the hyundai come up behind us and potentially overtake us for the for the race lead now i wasn't really too concerned i felt like okay you know there's going to be someone that's going to come flying past me at some point and there's not going to be much i can do about it other than punt them off into the wall and hope that i could do that do that to every player and hope that the stewards don't watch but that's not particularly likely so we're just going to have to accept here i think that this guy is going to overtake us go flying through i have my own race to run really my race is with my fuel tank rather than any of the other drivers so the hyundai driver off they go into the distance and i had a five and a half second gap to third place this was doable i could potentially finish second here with three laps to go and now a five second gap to third i could afford to lose a couple of seconds per lap and still be in second so let's see if i can actually do it this is the beginning of lap 15 this is the end of lap 15 and well unfortunately the gap came down very quickly as uh, there was there wasn't much i could do in fact there wasn't just one person behind there was two someone in a supra and someone else in a nissan gtr actually no it was a cayman it was a porsche cayman so here we go one lap to go i had 0.9 laps of fuel remaining at the beginning of the lap so it looks like i might be able to scrape a finish but would it be in second would it be in third or would it be in fourth that would be the key question here and i was just trying to keep the gap as big as possible but i feared that i was just delaying the inevitable at this point and it's one of those really weird races when you do this when you do this strategy and no one else does it everyone else is doing the one stop you're out there on your own 
and you've got cars coming at you a lot quicker because they've got fuel to burn and I just do not have that luxury. So I wish I could magically teleport some fuel into the fuel tank, but that's not really how physics works. That's not really... Um, unfortunately, humans have not developed that technology just yet, and I certainly haven't. And down the back straight, the Supra is easily going to float by and move up into second with barely a quarter of a lap to go. Trust me, this was painful to watch these cars go by with 0% fuel now. I mean, this was getting really precarious. I had to, I really had to get over this hill, otherwise there was no chance I would get to the finish. And as I go over this hill, I should be safe now. I could roll to the finish line if I had to. But unfortunately, losing two positions on the final lap was quite painful to see. But finishing in P4, 233 points, and it wasn't such a bad race ultimately, given the car is not the best. But I joined the second lobby, qualifying in P8, four tenths off of pole. I felt like my lap was good, but there were more better players in this lobby, I would say, compared to the first race. But with the first race in mind and fresh in the memory, we start the second race. And I felt like this time, well, at least I could manage my fuel a little bit better and just try to manage the race a bit better, given my experience of the first one. So let's see how this one kicks off. Trust me, this one really did kick off on lap one, starting in eighth. And it really got interesting very quickly. Uh, this is the scene we saw in the intro of the video. As we hurtle down the hill through the S's and then back up the other side, we're going to have someone in the wall on the right hand side. That's one position gained and suddenly we have a sprawling mess of five cars and I'm going to go through on the right hand side and move temporarily up into third position. So five positions gained at the early stages of the race, but it was kind of a, a weird lap, a very, very weird lap because I, if anything, I didn't really need to be gaining positions I just needed to manage my fuel and do my own thing until the end of the race so down the back straight here up behind the Subaru you can see the cars in front already beginning to pull away as they're presumably on in fuel mix one with well with a faster car in a straight line as well so the Supra tries to go around the outside on the right I'm going to cover that one off and to be fair this car is pretty good on the brakes and through the corners but then you get to anything resembling a straight and then you're in deep water coming down the hill and uh, at the end of lap one we've gained four positions p4 but as i said just a moment ago this race was so much about race management and just time management i didn't want to lose time i didn't want to get in too many battles so this was the main thing i was trying to manage it was actually quite a precarious situation once again in a different way in the sense that I had lots of faster cars trying to get past me and you could definitely lose a lot of time if they battle past you in the wrong way. So the Nissan GTO goes through, as you see the speed difference is unreal. I know I'm in lean mix four, but still that thing is so, so fast in a straight line. And then there's another GTR coming out of nowhere. I was gonna look up the inside and I felt like I was gonna try and fight this one around the outside and not, I mean, this contradicts exactly what I just said just a moment ago of letting people pass. But I, I actually I don't think that was too bad, that one. So down the main straight, this one was bad. So Super goes by, Lancer Reaver up the inside as well. Nissan GTR jumps in as well, and I felt like, okay, this time I'll, I'm not going to fight you. I'll just let you go. Three positions lost in one corner, make that four as the WRX comes through as well. Back down to eighth, back to where I started, but the fuel management has been better in this race so far. Dropping down the hill, just trying to tuck in to the slipstream of the car in front as much as possible to well hopefully save some save some air resistance and therefore fuel which would be good in the long run now this viper come up behind this is exactly what i didn't really want so the viper kind of went for this move and i think he got just got his nose up alongside and unfortunately i was going to lose a bit of momentum here you might have noticed the lancer evo in front having a weird entry line to that corner and it's that kind of moment there where you can just easily lose a second, maybe a second and a half, sometimes two seconds, just from one minor skirmish. And in a race where you're trying to minimize time loss, that's not ideal. Now this guy just cuts across in a very late defensive move. Not that it was necessary because in the GTR he would have beaten me to the corner anyway. 
and then the rest of the pack comes flying through and I'm down suddenly now in 13th. So this race had a very different dynamic compared to the first race, there's no doubt about that. And this is the thing you, you realise, you know, no two races are the same really. Even if you have the same strategy in mind, even if the same people around the same track in the same cars, you just have to judge the race accordingly and it always seems to be slightly different. By this point in the race, I was just lapping towards the back of the pack with this Lancer Evo and the Porsche, uh, who had a mistake there on the exit of that turn. So moved off the position, a little bit later they got, uh, they got me back. So it was a good little battle with this guy, who then I realised was probably also doing the no-stop strategy, which was going to be really interesting to see who could win out of the two of us. So yes, I do have my own race, but I'm also racing that guy directly. So nine laps of fuel remaining with nine laps to go. So the fuel is on target at the moment. And a little bit later into the race, so this is the end of lap 11, beginning of 12. You can see cars coming through. I was in second at that point. But then this GTR went through as expected and just kind of made a hash of the first corner. So I wasn't going to waste any time hanging behind. I just felt like, okay, if you're going to be slow, I'll just go back past you and keep my momentum, keep my speed. And for some, I, I really don't understand that guy's strategy there. It's really weird because on the next lap, he kind of, well, he just did this. Instead of going for that move there, he should have just gone for it. He tucked back in and, and, and then sat behind me. Um, and I think, I fear for him that this indecision was bringing a closer battle between the guys behind. You see, how, uh, see now how the guy in the silver GTR is having a good battle. Had he overtaken me a couple of laps ago, the red GTR would have just easily flown off into the distance, but it just shows you the costliness of slight indecision. And uh, here we go, lap 13, still in P2, the Porsche in the lead. This GTR gets a penalty, has to serve it, but I fear that's only delaying the inevitable. So this became a very interesting race with three laps to go. The GTR comes through, moves up into second, so I'm back down to third. The Porsche is still there in first, but not very far away. We were lapping fairly evenly on pace. A little bit later on, on lap 14, you can see here GTR with another penalty. And this is where finally the red GTR is going to be able to spring a surprise and move up a couple of positions. And interestingly, we had another Suzuki Swift, presumably someone who was doing a much better job than me with the fuel strategy, uh, fuel strategy as uh, they went for the one stop, I had gone for the no stop. But this was a very intriguing final couple of laps because as you can see now, two laps to go, the top five are within one second. This is a very interesting dynamic now that we have so many people so close, two Suzukis, two GTRs and one Porsche. And then the guy at the front and the guy at the back, myself, needing to fuel save quite drastically to make it to the end. So this one was going to end quite weirdly and I felt like Maybe the two GTRs, they were battling quite hard and not always cleanly. So I felt like, well, there's still potential here to salvage something better than fifth. Because they could easily hit each other and get a penalty in some way. The hit came here. You see the Porsche goes up the inside of the Suzuki. He does a good job to keep the car back on the track, uh, to keep it on the track. And now I felt like this was maybe my chance. But in Lean Mix 4, there wasn't much chance because you see the Suzuki there managed to pull away. Likewise, the Porsche... I was still managing my fuel to the end and it was just one of those frustrating races where I felt like if I could just be a few seconds up the road then I would be in first place if I could have just managed everything 1% better and it just shows you the fine differences in motorsport really, it really does matter you know, ruining potentially some of those mistakes some of those minor skirmishes earlier in the race which might have cost me 1 second or 2 seconds you know, I could be easily in 4th maybe on the podium but at the end of lap 16 as you can see here winding down this race I still just had to manage the fuel and bring the car home but what I did find really interesting was just the way that this race panned out alongside the first race as well and dropping down the hill at the end of the final lap it was going to be a fifth place and something quite interesting about that result right is this because as, as I finish take a look at the total time 23 minutes and 44 seconds now if you take a look at my first race earlier in the video i did 23 36 so i did the race eight seconds quicker 
And therefore, you know, if I had done my first race time in the, in the second race, I would have won it. So it just shows you the difference in race management and, you know, how, how minor things can actually scale up to really affect your result. But thank you so much for watching. Have yourself an amazing day and I shall catch you next time. Goodbye.